in one candle to put up a $14, $15 candle, excuse me. And now all it needs to do is reclaim the five day. Remember the five day we just talked about a few minutes ago? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, had a good day of trading. So uh, crazy tape, right? Let, let's talk about it. So going into today's session, last night when I was recording the video, um, I, like I said, I was probably 2,000% sell bias. I think that's the best way I, I can say it. Um, so when I recorded the video and I sent it out, right, I sent it out for editing, everything started coming in, right? So everything was coming in, like uh, Tesla was down like 20, like everything was down. I was like, oh God, I gotta, you know, it, it, and then my game plan got completely destroyed. But what I wanted was, if you remember last night's video, I, I wanted a gap up. And I said, well, market gods, if you can just give me a gap up, I'll take care of the rest. And if things started confirming, the value, right? We talked about it. The value is definitely to the downside. And, and again, here was again. Here's the greatest part about being uh, in control of your trading. And I say this all the time: have an opinion, have a game plan. Let that game plan play out. Okay? Don't overthink. Don't overcommit. Don't forecast. Don't start putting in feeler or starter positions. Let the confirmation via price action completely commit. So we got. I woke up this morning. I saw the Dow up 150 points. I was like, this is awesome. This is fantastic. Now all we need to do is wait for these things to start coming in, get rejected off supply, start taking down ranges. We should have a really, really good day, right? The problem was the market had his mind of its own. And the amazing part about having the ability to control your trading, have the ability to control your emotions, you can wait for things to play out. So as much as the market got strong and stronger and stronger and stronger, obviously never violated the previous ranges, which is again, the, 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 pretty much my game plan going into today, just to start take, taking down the previous ranges from yesterday. The amazing part is we started seeing not only strength, right? Because the market just kept on getting stronger and stronger, but we started seeing a lot of weakness as well. And when everything was said and done, there was a lot of value today, okay? Not only to the upside, and we'll talk about the pivots in a second, but there were downside pivots as well. So for example, names that were weak yesterday, the Netflixes of the world, the, um, the, the Boeings of the world, they continue to be weak, even Roku's, they continue to be weak. Um, and what today, again, which shows you over and over again, and this is a very, very strong, uh, important message to the traders, I keep on reiterating this point. Again, you could be wrong. Again, if you're in this business, okay, and you want to be right and you have thin skin, you're not going to have a trading career. Okay. I don't care how passive the trading career could be. You could be a passive investor. If you don't have the thick skin, okay. And realize being wrong, your opinion is wrong until your opinion gets validated by confirmation. Then if you're soft, right. If, and if the lightest slight of wind could blow you off your game, then this is not for you. I, I give you my word. This is not for you. This is a business. You have to be incredibly thick skin. You have to assume that you're going to be wrong. But the most important part is, again, like I say in every single video, you could be wrong theoretically. Your, your game plan could be a thousand percent wrong. Again, you couldn't come in more sell biased than I was going to today's session. The most important part is don't be a mule, okay? Do not be a stubborn mule and let price action destroy you on the way up. Let everything play out. And if things are not playing out the way you want them to be, you could always switch sides. There's always two sides of the channel. Again, guy, God gave you two eyes, two ears, right? Two hands. You can trade both sides of the market. That's the most important part. Do not be stubborn. And today really did give you a really good glimpse of what the stock market has been doing for perma bears. I think that's the best way of saying it. Again, the trend line continued to be strong. Uh, at one point, the Dow was up like almost 700 points. Uh, we did sell off a little bit into the close. You'll see here the Qs, you know, sold off a few bucks. If you look at the diamonds, uh, the Dow had a you know, pretty, pretty ugly candle into the close. And if you look at macro wise, despite uh, the really good move today, you can see where we got rejected. If you guys remember, for me, the five-day moving average is a very, very important tool 
which most people don't even know it exists or don't even care to even acknowledge it exists. But again, the five-day moving average does represent short-term sentiment. And if you see here, look where the diamonds got rejected. You see this orange line? That's the five-day. The diamonds got rejected off the five-day and went back lower. If you look at the Qs, right, they didn't even make it up to the five-day moving average. Uh, if you look at the IWM, right, just got rejected right off the five-day moving average. So we're definitely not out of the woods. If you're a bull, okay, you can't turn around and say, well, see, that was the bottom yesterday. We're going highs. Maybe, again, like we say in every video, maybe it will, maybe it won't. We don't know. Okay, we're not smart enough to understand. So we're trying to just take day by day, right, interval by interval to make sure that we're trading properly. We're making decisions based on technical analysis or not exactly what we think is gonna happen next. Again, I can't tell you what's gonna to happen tomorrow, okay? I might have a, a, an idea, I might have a guess, I might have an educational, uh, an educational guess, but again, nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows, we're not that smart, and especially in this type of COVID environment that anything could happen at any given time. Again, if you're not, you know, if you're not letting price action dictate what's about to happen next, then probably you are trading behind the eight ball and that's the last thing you wanna do. Um, so going into tomorrow, again, this area here continues to be a very, very strong area uh, of support. That's the 50 day moving average. That's why I really wanted, if the market gapped up today, to kind of confirm this and we would have had a really aggressive waterfall. But if you look at the pivots today, right? And, and I'll show you in a second. If you look at the pivots today, I started putting pretty much every beta name Red to green, okay, a green to red, excuse me. Because uh, again, that was the game plan. I, 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 want, I always give, let my game plan uh, give it every opportunity to succeed. Once it, it doesn't uh, potentially confirm what I'm thinking the night before is research, then again, we start going to the next, you know, we start going to the opposite channel. But if you notice, all the pivots in the morning, for the exception of, of, of Zoom, we'll get to Zoom in a second, every single pivot in the morning on all beta, right? Literally, I'd say, look, 329 if it builds below can flush. Amazon green to red, not a pivot. 3110 if it builds below it can flush. So I was literally lined up, right? Literally lined up for everything, right? Literally lined up for everything uh, to be a, a gap and crap stuff that supply to go back lower. Instead, we actually had two really good sides of the market today. Uh, it actually turned out to be a pretty solid day. On to the next one. Um, so let's talk about this. All these pivots, right? Obviously never came close. Uh, to confirming Tesla it was actually a, it was actually a really really good pivot to the upside twice today. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this was my first trade of the day today. Not this one, but I'll show you the pivot back to the upside. Um, but Amazon, right? Amazon never got close. Facebook never got close. Never got close. Never got close. Never got close. Uh, my second trade of the day was Boeing. Boeing is actually pretty good. So Boeing, watch green to red. Watch note: this is not a pivot. One sixty forty. One sixty. If it builds below, can flush. I traded Boeing twice today, both on uh, channel breaks to the downside. This is a really good trade. And again, this is my whole point. You don't need to be right. As long as the names that you're watching are still confirmed by your thesis, who cares what the indexes do, right? So uh, I get short, I get short uh, Boeing right here. So you see this whole, hold on, let me show you the 60 minute view. So you see this whole channel here, right? This whole 160, 160, 160, 160. So it starts breaking down 160. I short the thing. Uh, I cover some into a flush, break even on the bounce. I short it again, cover some in the flush, break even on the bounce. This thing went all the way down uh, to 157. Considering how the Dow was down 700 points, that is a huge, huge red flag. Obviously, we have to start watching Boeing more of a macro channel because, again, if there is a significant pull on the market, you got to pay attention to the names of the weakest. And this one is obviously uh, sticking out like a sore thumb. So Boeing is actually pretty good uh, for cash flow. Um, and then I write, I go, look, just in case the market goes up today, right? Who would have thunk it? Just in case the market goes up today. I go, watch the Zoom, right? 370 rejected several times, right? Just in case. I had, I, I had zero belief the market was going to go up today. But just in case, right? If the market does run today, keep an eye on this 370 level. It got rejected several times. If it confirms, it could fly. Zoom exploded, okay? Uh, the word Zoom exploded probably was an understatement. So here's the 370, right? This whole channel right here, 370. Look how many times it stopped at 370. Once, twice, three times, four times, right? Four times, five times. So five times it stopped at 370. Again, the theory behind this is now that schools are all open, right? 
virtual classes are in session. A lot of schools, a lot of colleges, kids got sent home. More, right? More virtual sessions. Uh, people, for the most part, are still working at home. So anybody who is not on Zoom during the summer is going to be back on Zoom. And it just absolutely exploded. We saw ridiculous call buying coming in for the 390s, 395, $400 weeklies. And this thing just went nuts. In one candle, it put up a $15 candle, excuse me. And now all it needs to do is reclaim the five day. Remember the five day we just talked about a few minutes ago, the shortest term uh, indicator of sentiment. Well, if this thing could reclaim, you know, reclaim this five day moving average, look how much room you have, right? You have room all the way up to this 434 level. So amazing. Again, this is why we say the stock market is the greatest reality show that's not on TV. There are no scripts, there are no actors. It's all price action, crazy, absolutely nuts. So Zoom was really, really good. Uh, SE, I wasn't even watching. I have no idea what SE even did. I said, watch it go green to red. Yeah, I have no idea. I wasn't even watching this thing. It never went that. And, and, and again, we covered this one last night, FMCI. Again, not many names, when you get a market that is getting destroyed and really has the potential to do some serious technical damage, the stocks that are strong, Right? They, again, they stick out like sore thumbs. We talked about this one yesterday. FMCI, uh, 2385, 24 needs to build. Look what this FMCI did today. Congratulations to all you guys who took it. This thing opened up below 24 and just exploded, right? 24 was the pivot and the thing went to $27. I mean, again, a $24 stock going to $3 is a huge move. So again, pay attention to the names during a market rally that can't rally like the Netflixes of the world, like the Rokus of the world. Like the, you know, like the Boeings of the world. So if the market does turn down, those are the areas you need to pay attention to. Again, weakness is weakness for a reason. They don't just magically get strong. Uh, so pay attention to those. So this one obviously stood out like a sore thumb yesterday and did very, very well, well today. Uh, so here was my notes. And so yeah, so this was my first trade of the day. Uh, 358 needs to build, experienced traders only. Again, take into consideration. Again, not every single trade is for everybody. So 358, the reason why this was the pivot Right? So here is the pre-market. Let me show you. So eh, it, my e-signal still has not updated. Uh, you have to make this bigger so you can see it. So here is the pre-market. You see this pre-market right here, guys? This channel here, the top of this channel here, that's the whole point of the supply zones, right? It's the highest channel here at 358. So it stopped here at 358. So I got long off the 358 break and it ran to like 364, 365 right away. And again, I know it doesn't sound crazy as it did two weeks ago, four or five points, right? But think about that. That's four or five points times five, right? So you're talking about almost like a $25, right? Pre-split candle. So again, $4 is good on Tesla. $3 is good. Hell, $2 is good on Tesla. The moral of the story is right now, the stock is trading incredibly aggressive, ridiculous amounts of liquidity, and the average true range is there. So the best thing the market, the, the best thing that Tesla actually has done has split really, really good trading vehicle compared to two weeks ago when it was trading four or $5 spread, you couldn't do any size and it was just a complete show, right? Ish show. So Tesla was good. If you look at my Twitter account, I logged off, um, I logged off, um, I had to pick up my son. Um, and I said, there was a, there was a pivot there, 356 to the upside. It took out that 356 pivot and just really, really exploded. If you caught that, a uh, really good job as well. So that was good. Really, really good. Uh, Alibaba ran pre-market. We didn't have a chance to trade this thing. 274 uh, ran to like two, almost 276. We, we didn't have a chance to trade this thing. It ran pre-market aggressively. Uh, Roku never got here to the upside. Uh, and again, you know, here's a sneaky pivot on ZM. Macro stock exploded. BYND, it, BYND is really good. I mean, I know people are not in love with BYND, but I tell you, when BYND does go, it really does go. So 136 was the pivot here. 136 was the high here. 136 was the high here. 136 high is the high here. So we said right here, 136 needs to build. And stock traded as high as today at 39.50. I still like it. Again, if we do have another update tomorrow, why can't it test the top of this channel here? So I'm definitely, definitely watching uh, beyond for tomorrow. So really good move uh, both ways. ZM take on the way up. FMCI take on the way up. Uh, Tesla perfect. I mean, there's nothing else to say. It was a perfect, perfect move, new highs. Uh, Netflix got destroyed. Again, here's a perfect example of the stock was weak. The stock was down at least you know, about $7 at one point. 
Got down to this 495 level, didn't quite make it, but again, the game plan was anything that goes green to red, if you're an experienced trader, again, it's not a pivot, but if you are an experienced trader can tolerate risk, that was the game plan, the pull. And this thing got pulled very, very aggressively. Uh, Roku, not, not a big flush. Uh, it broke down below 59.75, only went down like 50, 60 cents. Wasn't a big move there as well. Uh, obviously, Facebook never flushed. Uh, and then Facebook had a pivot to the upside, it only ran up about a dollar before it got rejected into supply. Uh, Boeing, yeah, 57.50 is coming, 50.57 was the low. Uh, Tesla, right. So Tesla, 3.41 to the downside, which obviously never triggered. Uh, and then we had a pivot back to the upside, 36 on deck. Anyway, so good action, really, really good action. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not really, I'm kind of open-minded what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, if you guys, for all you guys who are in the webinar uh, in, on the Twitter feed, um, if you guys notice, I put some longs. I put some shorts. I, I really don't have a great bias for tomorrow. Usually, like last night, I had a really aggressive bias. Um, I kind of want to see what happens. I like that we obviously didn't roll over and take out yesterday's lows, but I also am not in love that we couldn't build higher, right? We couldn't, we couldn't build more aggressively into the close. Instead, it was a $2 pull. I really didn't like that, especially with the Dow as well. So tomorrow, um, I am neutral. We'll probably... Uh, get more clarity tomorrow within the first candle. Okay, and as you can see today, you know when you come in with when you come in clear-headed with a very very good game plan and things kind of shift. Okay, it's very very important to shift with it. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.